in this lab, we're poisoning the front end web cache by injecting an XSS payload in the query string. And that query string is reflected in the response, but at the same time, it's also an unkeyed input. And that means that we can't use the query string as a cache buster while we do our probing. But I'll show you a few alternative headers that you can use as a cache buster instead to avoid impacting live end users that are browsing the home page. So let's switch to Burp and go to proxy and HTTP history. And we want to get requests for the home page and send it to repeater. Switch to repeater. So gonna send that request. And the first question you want to answer is, is this home page a cache oracle? And we can see that it is because we can see three caching related headers. We can see that we hit the cache. The age is three seconds and our cache response here will expire in 32 seconds when it hits the max age. So the homepage is a cache oracle and we can continue to use it for our probing. Now let's try adding a cache buster. So I'm gonna just send this request again and we get an age, we get a cache hit and an age of 14. Then I'm gonna add a cache buster for a name CB with some random values or with random input and send the request again. And you can see that we get an age of 24 and a cache hit. So this means that the query string is actually an unkeyed input and isn't part of the cache key. Let's wait for that cache to expire and then we send the request again. And this time, if we look for our query string here in the response, we can find it reflected in the response. So even though it's not part of the cache key, we can see that the query string is being reflected in the response. So this is likely an area where we can try and inject JavaScript. The issue at the moment is though that if we start playing around with this and trying to inject like an alert pop-up, we would be actually infecting or injecting that into the actual front page simply because this cache buster uh, is, isn't working. We've just confirmed that. So we would be impacting live end users while we do our probing. So we need to look for some alternative cache buster headers that we can use to avoid impacting those actual end users. And the first header I want to try is the cookie header. So I'm going to set a cookie header for a name of CB and then some random input here after cache buster and send a request. And we still get a cache hit and an age of 15. So the cookie header isn't any good as a cache buster. Let's see, we also have the accept header here that we can try. So I'm going to add a comma here followed by text slash cache buster some random input, send the request again, just wait for the response to come back. The lab is a bit slow, but we can see that we still get a cache hit and the age still went up to 34 seconds. So the accept header is no good either. Let's try the accept encoding header here. So I'm adding a comma and then saying cache buster, some random input again and resending the request. And we still get a cache hit and an age of eight seconds. So that's no good either. The last thing we can try is an origin header. So let's set an origin error with a value of HTTPS and then uh, cache buster, something random dot example.com and then send a request. And this time we do get a cache miss and an age of zero seconds. So if we send a request again, we get a cache hit. Let's try modifying our cache buster here, adding a few characters, send a request again and wait for the response to come back and we get a cache miss again with an age of zero. So that confirms that the origin header is a keyed input and we can keep using that as a potential cache buster to avoid impacting live end users. It's also handy for our own probing because every time that we make a modification to our payload here, where we're going to be attempting to inject JavaScript, we can, um, if we want to invalidate the cache response, we don't have to wait for the max age here to expire. We can just modify the origin cache buster here that we that we found and then we can continue our probing and that way uh, it speeds things up quite a bit. Now let's try injecting our JavaScript over here by using the, the query string. I am going to modify the origin header here just to make sure that we invalidate whatever cache response was here before. And then let's see if we want to exit this, we need a single quotation mark and then we need to close the tags and then we can add our own script tags, do an alert for one and then close the script tags and send this request. And we can see that it's nicely reflected here in the response. So let's try and request this in the browser. And we need to do it this way because we need to make sure that the origin header is set. So I'm going to paste this. And yeah, we do get the pop-up. And if we go to the normal front page without the cache buster uh, from the origin header, we don't get a pop-up. So that way, we whatever we're doing is, is segmented away from whatever uh, visitors are browsing the normal home page. So now we've confirmed that our injection is working. All we have to do to solve the lab is to remove the origin cache buster 
So I'm going to go back to the request here, and I'm going to remove the origin header. And then I'm going to send a request again. And we get a cache hit this time, because we see the age is 25 seconds. So let's wait for that to expire, five more seconds to go. And then let's keep sending loads of requests now to make sure that we get uh, our response cached. So let's go to the lab again and refresh it. And this time we do get a pop up for the home page. All we have to do now is wait for the lab user in the background or the victim to browse the front page. And they just did. So we got the pop up. Congratulations, you've solved the lab. The victim is only browsing the lab every 30 seconds or so. So you might have to go back in here if it doesn't solve for you already. Go back in here and make sure that you repoison the cached response here when whenever the max age expires. So that's right now. So we've repoisoned. So when we refresh the page now, we get an alert pop up again. So just keep doing that until the, the lab solves for you. I hope that was helpful to you and thank you for watching.